Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Orzov Control. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys enjoyed the MTG and chill video yesterday. Again, that's more just supplemental content. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I know we did have one comment saying it was vastly different from uh, a, a longtime viewer of the channel, so thank you so much for watching. Um, it is vastly different, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's personally just a nice way of getting some of these practice games out there so you guys get a more well-rounded view of the decks that we actually get to play on the channel because essentially that's the practice stuff like you guys are now getting to see that I'm just not able to commentate on it because I just don't have the time to go through that whole process and and set up for all that kind of stuff it's a little bit easier to record just the practice sessions as background music kind of stuff is playing so super easy um but hopefully it's something you guys can enjoy, not expecting it to do as well by any means as the normal gameplay videos, but it is just a fun way to get a little extra gameplay out there for you guys. So you can throw it on in the background, sit back, relax, just watch it and ha hang out. Um, but today we are playing Orzov Control, guys. This is, I think, a really interesting control list now that Meat Hook Massacre has been banned uh, from the standard format. And I'll tell you exactly why. Path of Peril. Um, Kind of a straightforward card, but here's the deal. We don't have the best sweepers right now. Uh, we do have good sweepers, don't get me wrong. I think Path of Peril being one of them. Uh, we also have things like Farewell, which I did not include in this list. However, uh, we do have, I think, enough that we can still manage a lot of the decks that we expect to see right now, which are, of course, the token decks, the enchantment decks, things like that. Uh, that are looking to go wide and get a lot of stuff down onto the field. Uh, we have ways of dealing with that. Now, to capitalize on the specific nature of a lot of those decks, most of them are power or mana cost two or less. Uh, now with that, I've got Path of Peril as a four of, as well as Malicious Malfunction as a two of. Uh, now, I didn't want to go too crazy on these, of course, but uh, there's a couple key cards that this hits, uh, which I think is really important. So first of all, against the enchantment deck, Kami of Transience, if it does not have any counters on it, this is an easy way to just get it out of there and exile it. Exiling it is really important. Uh, the 1-1 one, one flyer that you can replay out of the mono red deck, this also gets rid of, uh, as well as Tenacious Underdog against opposing kind of mono black or Esper decks, things like that. Uh, so this actually handles quite a lot in the format right now in a more permanent way than we are used to uh, or even that Path of Peril can provide. Uh, now the benefit of Path of Peril is of course a little bit more flexibility. It hits all creatures uh, for three with mana value two or less, which is pretty good. Again, that hits the commies, it hits the, the tenacious underdogs, it hits the uh, little... Ch um, uh, the, oh, I can't, Jokai Naturalist, I couldn't think of the name. Uh, so it hits quite a lot uh, in the format, but it's not permanent necessarily. A lot of them are able to get replayed, uh, and that's where having this split kind of comes in. Uh, now, the rest of the deck is very control slash token focused, and I think that's kind of, again, the strength of Orzov is that you can control the game while passively being able to kind of throw out a few extra creatures and rebuild very quickly because we just have that option with things like Wedding Announcements or Edgar here, uh, which is a very resilient card. Uh, Sunset Revelry, in case we get behind, this is a nice way to kind of rebuild a little bit, get ourselves back on top, and then ideally be able to, to draw further into the deck with it as well. Uh, we do have a handful of Planeswalkers, two Lilies. I didn't want to go too crazy on the Lilies. I don't think Lily is that great against the meta right now. Uh, when you've got go wide decks and things like that going crazy, making them sacrifice a single creature really isn't that exciting. The discard, however, is pretty good. Uh, and again, we, we are okay to discard. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, Wandering Emperor is a little bit better for the deck, giving us that exile ability as well. Uh, and then Soren does provide us with some card draw as well as just flyers that we can attack in with. Uh, a lot of the early game is removal. We've got Fateful Absence plus a 3-3 three and three split on the marches. Uh, we do have two Faithbound Judges as alternate win conditions. Uh, it's a great replayability kind of piece. It's also a good discard to the Lily. Uh, and then, of course, we do have four Invoke Despair sitting at the top as card draw slash a way of dealing with a lot of what the opponent's doing. Uh, the only real tech land is Rafine's Tower. I've got it as a two of here. This just gives us the out of cycling. 
Uh, that's really it. Uh, but all in all, I think this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, this is my version of the deck. I don't think this is a perfect version. This is just one that I thought I would give a shot to. Uh, so let's see what we can do, guys. Let's have some fun. Let's hopefully get some wins. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, a little light on lands. However, we do have quite a number of good turn three options. If we can get a black land, we've got two sweepers. If we get any land, we actually have the wedding announcement. So I think I will give this a shot. One thing to note about this deck as well is uh, the cleave cost on Path of Peril is actually our max mana cost. Uh, and I did go up to 25 lands. Given that we are a control list, uh, it's generally pretty important to make sure that you're hitting your land drops in a control deck, uh, just to make sure that you can get those big payoff spells. Uh, and so I, I think we should be okay on the land front, but you know, we'll see as we go through. Uh, looks like the opponent is taking a few minutes to decide. Uh, again, guys, I just wanna say that MTG and chill thing, um, I want you guys to give me some feedback on that. Uh, because I know it's not like normally when you go on and you're looking for gameplay and things like that, you're probably expecting commentary and I totally understand that. That's why we do these daily videos. Uh, but I wanted to, I, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of a well-rounded view of how things work. And normally, uh, that practice stuff or that practice, you know, those practice games, you don't really get to see. Uh, and so, you know, I make misplays quite a bit in those, uh, and I really mess up quite a lot uh, in general, but uh, I definitely think it's a more um, understandable way of looking at the uh, the game, and, you know, it, it may not be worth it, but I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm actually going to do just do this. Uh, it's not that exciting, but it does give us a couple creatures here if we need it. Um, kind of curious to see what they do. We did not draw a land yet, uh, which is certainly not ideal. Uh, nice. That's very good. Uh, kind of curious to see if they make us sacrifice a creature. They do. It's a little weird. Um, and they did not attack. Okay, I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, so we unfortunately don't have a great option here, so... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and march the Lily before they can actually activate it, and we'll just have to pass here. Kind of unfortunate um, we're not drawing lands. Again, it happens. Uh, this is why we have extra uh, one extra land in the deck, but it's also why the mana curve of the deck isn't necessarily all that high is to avoid this issue. But, you know, we kept a bad hand, and it is what it is. I'm going to attack in, and uh, we'll pass here. We do have outs later on. Though they are dwindling with that. Um, okay. Go ahead and throw out the wedding announcement and we'll pass. Uh, certainly don't love seeing Shieldred solely because we really don't have a great option to deal with that. Uh, we do have the Wandering Emperor at some point here. Uh, so if they decide to attack and we do draw land, we can just go ahead, cast that Emperor and get that out of there. Oh no. Of course it's a Baron's. Uh, okay. Well, we're not dead yet, uh, but we are pretty close, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Okay. Um, now we are dead, right? So they just get to attack. Yeah, they got us here. I'm going to go ahead and concede, guys. That was a super quick game. Bad, or bad keep, excuse me, on my end, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, we can keep this. We do have a little bit of early interaction with that Sunset Revelry as well. I think this will be okay. Uh, one thing to note also, um, we did see a Shieldred in the last deck, and so easy question to ask, why don't we have a Shieldred? Uh, it's really solely because I wanted this to be more of a Planeswalker-focused deck. I intentionally didn't put uh, too many creatures in this one, um, solely because I didn't want to go crazy on that. We knew we were going to go heavy with the, the sweepers and things like that, so it felt like a better option to just go for, uh, you know, like a Soren in place of the Shieldred. Um, nice. Okay, uh, let's see. I mean, we could certainly Path of Peril. Um, alternatively, we could just get this off the field. Um, I actually think this is kind of okay. 
Uh, we can block here if they decide to attack in. I'm perfectly happy to do that. I'd rather not go for the Path of Peril quite yet, uh, solely because they could very easily have a lot more, you know, high volume things that we want to kill uh, than this little goblin token. So we'll present a lethal block if we need to and see what happens. All right, what's better than one goblin, two? Uh, that's perfect. Again, gives us outs for that Path of Peril if we need it. Uh, would love to draw... What do we need? Black sources would be good for that Invoke Despair for sure. Alright, do we think they have uh, a burn spell? Probably, but let's, let's try it. Uh, we're not really sacrificing much. We're losing a couple 1-1s, but that's not really the end of the world. So I'm not really worried by this. Uh, I'd rather them go ahead and burn a spell anyway, so that's fine. Okay. Um, nice. So let's do this. Uh, I would normally would have have Rafine's Tower might have been better, but let's go ahead since we did play that uh, that way. Let's go ahead and throw out the two three life linker. I'd like these to flip before we activate that path of peril, uh, or at least one of them to flip, uh, because we can just build up into a giant path of peril uh, and pay that cleave cost, and they're kind of just out of luck. Um, all right, let's see what they do. They can just straight kill Soren this turn if they want. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Invoke is pretty good. Um, that's fine. Again, we're going to take some hits here. They're going to get some mana, but it's still not like... We're not in a dire circumstance yet. You know what I mean? Like, we're getting there, but we're not there. We still got 18. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think we just pass. I'm really not overly concerned. Um, I maybe should be more concerned at this point, but we do have that Path of Peril coming down next turn, which is just going to get all of this off the board. Um, and they really don't have a ton going for them at the moment, so other than these creatures. So uh, I can do this just for the sake of kind of ruining their play here. This is more of just a, a mean play. <laughs> Uh, normally I wouldn't do that, but, uh, I think it's fine. It just saves us a little extra damage, if nothing else. Um, it does give them a draw, but it loses the, the two damage and the extra treasure token here, which is nice. Cool. I do, that is one of my favorite things to do when they have a, uh, reflection out, is wait for them to target something and then just straight kill whatever they are targeting. <laughs> Obviously, that's pretty fun. Um, hmm, actually, I think we have to let this resolve discarding the Fateful Absence. As much as I don't want to do this, uh, we can't lose this land uh, because we need exactly six to, to cleave this out here. So um, as much as this kind of sucks, I think this is going to have to be the, the way to, uh, to go here. Let's go ahead and destroy all creatures. Just get all of these off the field. Um, I do wish we had another black source for the invoke here. It would have been nice to invoke first, get this lily off the field, uh, just so we don't have to worry about it. But we do actually have a decent discard outlet with that faith, uh, bound judge. So we'll see. <sighs> All right. Obviously they're going to make us discard again. That's fine. Um, and it's definitely the judge. We want that Invoke Despair to be able to deal with this if we draw a black source. So um, Swamp is the perfect draw at the moment. That's not a Swamp. Um, it's okay given it allows us to um, kind of deal with this. There was some amount of consideration given to uh, or there should be some amount of consideration given to not playing the wedding announcement because we know they're going to make us discard. Um, however, I think it's more important that we do that. Wow. Okay. Well, now I wish I hadn't, but it's okay. Uh, so now they're going to make us discard. And I think this is probably just going to mean they win um, because this is going to go away. We no longer get the invoke play. We do have outs to deal with Liliata, but... 
Um, unfortunately, they're a bit few and far between. Not, not really, I guess. We have March, but um, yeah, I think they're they're definitely going to have us here. Um, kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. I do really like the Rakdos version of the uh, kind of controlly lists. You just get so much solid access to so many different things. It's really good. Um, I mean, okay. Lily v. Lily. Uh, not great, you know? Not great at all. Uh, but that's okay. We'll make them discard just to get that last card out of hand. And it was a cut down, which is essentially useless against us, which is kind of nice. Not useless, it's just not that good. Distraction. Kill Lily. That's fine. Um, not really worried about if Lily stays on the field or not. Yep, there's the Shieldred. I am second guessing the Shieldred uh, not having Shieldred in the in the deck. Oh look, it's our it's our card we need. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean <laughs> this is a, a pretty easy loss for us. Um, plus up, sure. Uh, th it is nice to be able to have a like alternate wing con in the deck, which is something that the Rakdos deck just, I mean, aside from this, uh, like a true alternate wing con from this side of things, but uh, I'm assuming they're going to minus six and I'm going to go ahead and good game them here. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump into a game number three. Let's hopefully get a win. We'll see. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, yeah, right. We've got double black here. Uh, we've got some nice turn threes. This is a weird one, but we're gonna try it. If it just sucks, it sucks. Uh, okay, thankfully we drew a white source. That's really good. Uh, we needed that white source. And it looks like this might be the, yeah. Looks like this is gonna be the enchantment deck, uh, which is not actually all that bad for us. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think we just pass. Not gonna, not gonna sunset revelry quite yet. Um, sure. Great card. Um, but I don't think it's gonna. Uh, that's not super bothersome. I think we should be okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and pass. I'm not gonna fateful absence the spirited companion. All right. Ooh, that's quite good. Uh, so that gives us an out to deal with this, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm actually just going to wedding announcement as well. Uh, this may seem a little odd, but uh, I kind of want to... I don't know. I kind of want to play this out a little bit further and see how things go. Um, we can easy block something if we need to. They get to draw a card, which is fine, because then we can sunset revelry, uh, which will hopefully eventually draw us a card, and then we actually have March to deal with whatever we need to here. Okay, they did not attack. Interesting. Um, so, I mean, we've got some options here. We can just malicious malfunction, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we did not draw what we wanted to draw, that's for sure. Um, I'm gonna attack first. Let's see what they do. Just out of curiosity. Um, I think we kind of need to get rid of this little guy. Um, that's Sigarda Splendor is a scary card because it's the way they get to draw and gain life, uh, which is just not something I'm really into allowing them to do. Um, so next turn, we actually have Malicious Malfunction that will still sweep the board regardless of if this you know sticks or whatever. Uh, and that's great too. We actually just get to kill that. Oh, even better. This is going to be great. 100% um, just block. Uh, although, so this does flip. So actually, that makes it a little tricky. Um, wow. No lands is really sucking. Why are we, like, having so many issues with lands here? I feel like this shouldn't be a problem. Um... We have 25 in the deck, which I think is more than, not more than enough, but I think the right amount. This is not going as, as planned. Uh, a Path of Peril would be quite nice. Uh, just to be able to get rid of both of these. But, alas, 
here we are. Um, okay. Let's see. We didn't attack, and we still... Guys, what in the world? Um, okay, well... This is terrible. <laughs> like, we should not be having this many land issues. Like, this is kind of silly. Um, with 25 lands in the deck, you would think we'd have enough. Yeah, so they're all... That's massively scary. Okay. Again, we do have outs, but... Uh, nice. Rite of Harmony is so sick here. That's a free draw. Not free, but obviously kind of free. Um, man, so good. <laughs> Whew, okay. Oh, guys, what is happening? Why are we... We shouldn't suck this bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, it's fine. Um, Shieldred would have been good against this, though we couldn't have played it, so... Dude, what is going on? All right, this is kind of insane. Um, we, like, literally can't do... I mean... <laughs> this is terrible. I'm amazed we're still in the game. I don't know why they're not attacking. I think they're just trying to be cute about it, but, like... This is insane. The only reason I'm still, like, playing this is because I feel like we do have some outs, but, yeah, that's... I'm gonna. We're playing one more. That was insane. We should have drawn lands at some point during that game. All right, guys. Let's see if we can finally get a win. This has been insane. The land issue has been like a major problem, uh, and I didn't think it would be. Upping the land count, I felt like we had a perfectly reasonable shot at uh, <laughs> doing a better job here, but that's okay. Let's see what we can do. Uh, looks like potentially mono red is the, the opponent's deck here. Ah, this is a very interesting mono red deck. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's sunset revelry. Just to draw a card, if nothing else. All right, cool. Very good. So we do have the land here. That's gonna be really crucial for us because it is our second black source in particular, uh, which is obviously pretty nice. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we just let that happen right now. And I'll block one of these. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned by that three damage, but I would prefer not, knowing that we're probably gonna sweep at some point here, I'm not really looking to, uh, to just lose that. Um, I'll go ahead and exile this, I think. And I'm doing it now so it doesn't, I don't accidentally mess up the uh, the flip there. Um, I'm not gonna attack again. They're the aggressive deck, we're the long-term deck. So we actually aren't trying to be aggressive at this stage in the game. Um, we're just trying to, yeah, very good. So we'll block there, that's fine. Okay. Ooh, March is quite good. Um, so, we have two Edgars now. Um, hmm. Does that change anything? I think that just means we pass, right? I mean, technically we can play an Edgar, but we don't actually want to yet. Uh, we'd like to leave up Fateful plus March, but we want them to play something before playing the Fateful Absence, potentially. Yeah, so that's fine. That's also fine. So this is where we start to get a little bit going. All right, cool. Uh, submit zero. Let's just go ahead and do this. Okay. So we're gonna gain three back. They are going to attack for eight, which is a lot, don't get me wrong, but we are going to Path of Peril this upcoming turn to just get rid of everything, essentially. And again, lands seem to continuously be an issue. Um, all right. I'm amazed. Lands shouldn't be this big of an issue. We have 25 in the deck. Like, that's kind of silly. 
Uh, yep. Annoying, but fine. We do have that Sunset Revelry to gain us a little bit of life back as well. So again, not overly concerned by that. They're going to go ahead and play with Fire Us. Sure. Uh, as long as they have one creature on the field, we have Lily to deal with this. And then um, we can start kind of picking away at their hand. Okay. Well, sure. Sure, sure. Um, so they're going to get one, two, three, four damage in. Very smart of them to reconfigure on as well. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Path of Peril once again. That's not great. Um, do we just... I think we just Edgar, honestly. I'm not really sure. Like, they've got one card in hand, so the likelihood of them being able to burn out Edgar is quite low. I will happily trade these two. Um, and so that seems like maybe the play. Hmm. This is a tricky game, for sure. They're going to reconfigure onto that. Okay, so they're going to deal max damage here. Sure. We do have the out to kill that. That's fine. Please don't have play with fire. Crap. Well, this was a terrible run. You know? Just terrible but that's okay guys let's wrap this one up all right guys so unfortunately that was four straight losses <laughs> um i think some of that was kind of just bad like bad luck we didn't get lands like i don't really know why we didn't get lands i feel like we had enough in the deck um and i think we had the outs in hand in a lot of these cases it's just we needed to hit lands to be able to play any of them uh and so that's a little frustrating but you know it happens you can't be too upset by that uh and regardless i still think there's something to the orza version of control right now um i don't think this is the perfect list i would argue that there's probably a lot of other ways you can maybe cheapen this up and get it a little more efficient uh but it was still a fun way to just kind of jump right into it and see what we could do so uh unfortunately not a great Great showing just the reality of it but uh hopefully you guys still enjoyed and i appreciate you guys watching thank you guys so much again let me know your thoughts on the mtg and chill videos they are meant to just be kind of supplemental it's not meant to be the main focus of the channel but gives you guys a little bit of a like uh practice round vibe of what we do behind the scenes so hopefully that's helpful for you guys uh and just fun uh but regardless guys thank you so much i love you all have a fantastic day i'll see you again very soon